Hey everyone, today's video I'm going to show you what I do on my mix bus. Now I keep my mix bus at a minimum. I hardly use any plugins. I do all of the heavy lifting in the individual tracks and the auxes. So I know some, some engineers do top down mixing, which they pretty much mix the, the, the bus, the two bus, and then they mix into it. But I, I kind of do the reverse. I mix into the bus. So the bus only has a little bit of compression and maybe some saturation. And I'm going to show you what I do um, right now. Okay, so let's bring up, well, let's play just a section. Usually I like to play either the second chorus of the song, which I feel is probably the busiest. Sometimes the outro is, but I, I like to play this, the second chorus before the the bridge or the breakdown. All right, so let's take a listen first. I'm only going to play a few seconds. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the CLA mix down and it's the stereo. All right, so I use this to uh, my mix bus and this is what I do to it. First, I take out the bass and treble because I don't want anything to alter that. The glue is the, the compression and the drive is the saturation. And I just want to hit it maybe about minus two dB just to tame it. I don't want to slam it. I just want to tame it. So what I do is I just bring this down a little bit. I hit play and then I just bring it up until I'm hitting around minus two. Here we go. Okay, that's a good spot. Okay, again, shoot average minus two. And now for the drive, it, you can leave it there and I'll do a before and after, but I just like to bump it just a hair, like maybe one, okay? As you can see, one right there, okay? And again, it's very simple, very quick. So let me do a before and after, okay? So let's do a before and then after. Perfect. That sounds good. All right. The next thing I do, and this is really something I've been doing after I saw a, a video by Dave of Tar Taro, and that is I use a plugin called GoFoss. I think I'm pronouncing it right. GoFoss. All right. And then this is what this is, is like an active EQ, and it just listens to certain things, and it sounds like, it sounds like a blanket is being pulled out of the, like the speakers. And it adds some clarity to it. And this is what I do. I just take the recover and I bumped it to 20%. And I take the tame and I bump it to 20%. That's it. That's all I do. And as you can see here already, it starts to create an EQ curve. All right. But I like to always do first listen to what I have and then adding this. And then you can hear the difference. Here we go. Oh, yeah. So you hear how it just becomes brighter, a little bit clearer, like there's more clarity. And that's what this does. And I don't, I don't, and this is subtle. As you can see here, I'm guessing this is, yeah, this is 3 dB CPC, 6 dB is this line, so 3. So, and I'm going to play it again and just watch. So if, if it's doing anything, it's not doing more than 3 dB. And remember, 3 dB is, the difference of 3 dB is everyone knows that there's a difference. 1 dB of difference is you will know it if you're trying to hear it or if you're actively trying to listen for it then you hear the 1 db difference if you're not if you're just casually listening to something and there's either a bump or, or a dip 
in, in one db you really won't hear it but three db yes everyone will hear it and that's pretty much like I, I try to stay around there so let's 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 do a before and after and then i want you to look at the meters here Okay, so you can see it's, it's maybe even doing like one or two dB. It's just here around maybe 15K is doing a nice little lift. All right. And then th that's that's all I do. That, that, that will be it. I'm done. But there's one thing I do when I send it out to the client, and that is I add a limiter. And that's only so when a client listens to it, they hear the volume like loud. Because if I was to send this mix, it's, it will sound low. And they would think, the client would think that, oh, something's wrong because it's so low. But I add this plugin just to send it to them. But once it's approved, once the mix is approved, and I'm ready to send it to the mastering engineer, I, I remove this plugin. All right, so let me show you what I do. I use S Steven Slate's uh, Virtual Mastering Console. And then this compression, I remove it. I just stick with this. And I pretty much leave it the way it is. The only thing I do with this dynamic perception, I just bump it like less than one, like around maybe there. And then this knob, I just raise it up a little bit. It just does something to it um, that, that I like. Okay. Now, because it's going to get louder for you guys, I'm just going to use this constant gain monitoring. I, I don't usually use it. But f for the purpose of this tutorial, I will just so the, the volume won't increase. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that on. And you'll see in a minute why I did that. All right, and what am I shooting for? I'm shooting for about maybe minus 13 to minus 14 RMS. And I'm just going to raise the gain until I hit that. And then I usually click on here to reset it real quick as I'm playing. And you'll see that in a second. Okay, here we go. Perfect. And that's it. Okay. Now remember to remove this, but I'm not going to play it because again, it's going to get really, really loud because I am adding almost five dB to, to the overall mix. And that's it. I close this up. And then again, when I'm ready to send this to the mastering engineer, I just remove it. I, I don't bypass it. I like to disable it. And the way you disable on in Pro Tools is you hold on control, command and click. And now it's disabled. That is for me, I could have just done, I could have just bypassed it. But for me, I just, just for, just to make sure that it's not affecting the overall mix. I just like to bypass it. I don't remove it. I could, but because maybe in the future, I may, um, the client may contact me for, to do, um, to email, email you either do a remix or maybe do like vocals up or, or something. So if I have to recall the mix, I know that I had it and it still keeps the the settings. Let me just click it here so I can show, see and it just keeps the setting even though if I were to disable it. See? The plugin's inactive. But it still says if I would have removed it, then I would have had to do the whole thing over again. So I just rather disable it. And then that's it. See how very simple my mix bus is. I just have those two plugins and that's it. So if you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe. And until next time, happy mixing.